welcome everyone to Of the Publishing Persuasion, your <laughs> literary uh, podcast full of super smart things. Um, <laughs> is that is that a is that a stab or a head nod maybe to what I said the other day that we yes. are yes um, listeners. I, I did say to Angela the other day that we are the ultimate catfish of bookish podcasts because one of the questions for our hundred Theb was how did we come up with the name? And I literally burst out on the street laughing as I was like mulling it over. And I was like, well, yeah, like it sounds very literary and highbrow. I can't even say literary. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds very literary and highbrow of the publishing persuasion and then you click and it's all cloacas and <laughs> yeah we really we did we catfished uh, any I, probably everybody um but but the real ones stuck around you know mm-hmm. the real ones stuck around but yes we are of the publishing persuasion <laughs> um yes happy to be here just <laughs> Just literarying it up, you know? Just... Oh, we literary it up all day, every day. <laughs> we literary so hard. We go <laughs> so hard. We literary so hard. <laughs> That's our new logo. You might even say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that yeah. Welcome, everybody. Joke. If you would watch Bloody Avatar Last Airbender, you would know where the literariest is a soccer joke. Oh, and I hear I was just just laughing along thinking I knew what we were talking about. Um, mm-hmm. I I have watched a few episodes of late because my, let me just rat my son out real quick. He just left so I can speak freely now. Mm. He, because I have been telling him, I have been saying, Adrian, watch, watch Avatar with me. Yeah. You know, like Melanie keeps saying it's so good. So watch it with me. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I come to find out He's already watched it all, all of it. He's watched every episode and he goes, yeah, it's, it's really good, mom. And I'm like, excuse me, excuse me. He's watched it all, but he said he'll rewatch it. It was that yeah, good. He would, he would, he'll rewatch it for the rest of his life. If he is a true fan. <laughs> yeah, I was, I've <laughs> never been so disappointed in my life. I thought we were going to have a bonding experience. It's too and, good. Uh, Once you actually get hooked on it. And That's what he said. I've said one you need to pass a few of those early episodes that feel a bit annoying and kiddy in my opinion. Now I watch it and I'm charmed and I love it. But but I didn't the very first time. So I remember that. You just have to weather those first few and once you do it is it's you just have to know. You have to watch you will stop everything. You will cancel appointments to watch it. <laughs> and then you'll want to watch it again to. because yeah. once you finish you'll be like I need that hug again. Also, it's like just the best, like the the character arcs, especially Zuko. I know how you're going to love Zuko's character arc. Okay. Is Zuko, is he the firebender or no? Yes, he is. Yes. Okay. And is there, is there like a love? Because, because I do see a lot online, Mm. like, and I don't know if it's a fanfic thing, but like Zuko and is it the sister? Okay, it's fanfic, oh, friend. Okay, but I don't okay, want to okay. do any spoilers for you. But yeah, okay. there's a lot of fanfics. Um, some I agree with, some ah. I don't. I'd be curious to see what you think by the end. Okay. I think by the laws of writing that govern us, they <laughs> probably might have wanted to go that way. But except Zuko's technically not the main character; it's Aang. Ah, so, right, right, right. But, like, Oh, look, I can't tell you anymore without spoiling okay, it. And I so want okay. you to enjoy it properly for the first time. I, hell, I'm going to rewatch it. Why don't you rewatch it with me finally? Okay. 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 This is so literary of us. We're talking about character arcs, um, you know, <laughs> the laws of writing. We're and so Avatar good. Last Airbender. <laughs> yes. Okay. And, well, shout out to Hannah because um, yeah. she is listening to or has listened to Big Magic. Oh, it's right so here because I've started oh. reading it again because of Hannah. I saw yes. that post and I was like, damn, it's been like a year since I read Big Magic last. So I'm really grateful that she reminded me because it was like yeah. pouring water onto a desert. Like I need this book all the time. <laughs> yeah, I don't have the physical book. Yeah. I have the audio book, which I can, you know, re-listen to. 
Yeah. And it's read by uh, Liz. What's Liz? Uh, Liz Gilbert. Gilbert. Yeah. It's yeah. read by her. And oh. um, she's so charming. And so I'm going to have to re listen, but I want an actual, like a physical copy so I can you scribble need on one. it. And you mine, scribble on yours? I fold pages. And mm-hmm. you know how I find clovers all the time? Yeah. It's funny because this is the, because it's a big magic book. This is where I press them all. So, like, <sighs> it, and I found more than I realized. Like every few pages I turn, there's a clover. So it just feels like all the magic I found over the years coming back to me right now. It's been really nice, actually. Oh, I didn't realize so I found so many. I'm just holding them up. <laughs> you little witch. Little witch. Or little fairy witch. Green witch. <laughs> Did you magic. want to still introduce the show so I don't Oh, yeah, sure. The game? <laughs> <laughs> I know um, you yeah. need to get it out, otherwise the whole episode will be off kilter. Yeah, I'm otherwise amazed I don't we know got how to far. I'm amazed. I, <laughs> I was trying to go with the flow. You did uh, good. Yeah, I lose it. I lose it if I can't <laughs> do the intro. Welcome to the Publishing Persuasion. I'm Angela Montoya, author of Sinner's Isle and forthcoming A Cruel Thirst that's coming out December 17th. I know we have a while. It's okay, guys. It's okay. It's going to happen, though. And I am here with the author of Severed Cape coming out May 7th in an anthology. Do we have any info yet? No, no, we don't. (laughs) But you know what? You know what's exciting? I just, it's getting so close now. (laughs) Yes. Wait, May 7th. May 7th. It's the same as as Ambika. Ambika. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, like, it's... I don't know why they're waiting so long, but I just accept it. But what I do know is that it can only be so much longer. Any day, I did get, <laughs> I did get an invitation to a launch event. Oh so my god! We're having a launch event with, with um, I guess the main with Jason because he's also got a podcast, and oh. then we're also going to do something. We just have to talk it out and. We're going to do a little thing on of the publishing persuasion as well. He was very keen mm. on that idea. I told you that, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm, I've been waiting. Just, I've been waiting. I've just, been anticipating. Yes. I was trying to read your face. I was like, did I tell her that he loved that idea? So, yeah, I think we're going to do something here too. And, yeah, I guess any day there'll be some kind of pre-order and a cover. I don't know. I'm just rolling with the punches here. I'm just... <laughs> This is publishing. This is publishing. We've this all been publishing. chatting about this. But Some you know things what? we just have no control over. Right. That's it, eh? You really have to like kind of it it's like prepare for anything in publishing. Expect yeah. the unexpected and then also expect nothing sometimes. Yes. <laughs> you no, know what I mean? For, for real. For real. And I feel like I learned that a lot with Sinner's Isle. Like to expect nothing, mm-hmm. to expect everything, or yeah. but not, or or hope for everything, but not expect. I guess is the key mm-hmm. because I I remember I expected I was going to get physical arcs because I just assume mm-hmm. that's what everybody mm-hmm. got, but I didn't get physical arcs, mm-hmm. and so it was like this. It was like a moment of oh, okay, wait a second, yeah. I need to readjust my mindset and just be. Not so much of like whatever comes comes, you know, la di da, but um, but I can't control yeah many things in publishing, and so um, things like physical arcs, I apparently have no control over, even though I've been a very good girl. You, you know, have. I've been out. <laughs> you should deserve some physical arcs. God Damn there. it. Damn it. And I won't be getting them again for a cruel no. curse. No physical arcs. <laughs> Damn it. Um, but it didn't hurt this time because I didn't go into it expecting Sticking anything. It. Mm. Um, you know, you can always have a little poo-poo about it. Yeah. But but it it's what it fucking is, I guess. Right. <laughs> and let me tell you, my friend, it's it's not going to matter once that cover is unleashed in three days. Yes. Yeah. So days. I'm sure by the time this gets, yeah. goes out into the world, it will be upon us. That's true. It will be out in the world. I'm assuming, you know. Yeah. So. And once it does, the internet, my friend, is going to quake in its cloaca. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Clo- cloaca. Cloaca. <laughs> You can cloaca? say cloaca. I'm sticking with cloaca. Cloaca. Your cloacas will pucker. They will pucker. 
<laughs> tremor at the no but like I'm making jokes but in all yeah. serious like now I can't come back to serious after that but I do believe like honestly in my core it is one of the best young adult cover just book covers in general but since it's specifically targeted that I've seen in my life like it is so fucking good the internet is going to break over it. And I'm just putting that out there and manifesting that because I feel like it's true. Yes, manifest it, manifest it. No, I I love the cover. I think it's stunning. Mm. Like there's details in her dress and it's like you can yeah. see the stitching and it gives me chills every time because I'm like, God, how, how yeah. do people do this? Right. Um, yeah. But him, they've managed to capture like, both a softness and like a wildness to him yes. that draws my eye immediately. And, oh, you know, like it's, I feel like people are just even just like the story is incredible, but it's very bookstagrammable just as a cover. And that is not going to hurt your sales. I think <laughs> just, I guess, just manifesting cross. that, <laughs> that all these bookstagram <laughs> babes buy the book and, yeah, just just take a photo of the cover, put it online, get the word out there. <laughs> get it out, get it out. Yes. Uh, thank you. I want to say to anybody that is helping with the yeah cover reveal. Thank you in advance. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's gonna be a party. I think we're gonna. I will try. Melanie did remind me. Don't break your Instagram yes. because I did break my Instagram. Um, on my <laughs> debut day when Sinner's Isle came out, I went so hard and tried to like comment back to yeah. everybody's comments and um that instagram thought i was a bot and shut me down i couldn't <laughs> i couldn't do anything <laughs> i would think it probably doesn't help that you send like i don't know if our listeners have clocked this ever but one of my favorite things angela does is she hard dms me <laughs> oh my god I that made my thing <laughs> if you i was thinking that at the time there was a lot of hard d so like it's just we're taking the piss out of like the spammers who are like hard dm like dm me for like a shout out and for about let's collab let's collab yeah, yeah 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 i'm surprised you haven't done that one with me i'm now i am a hard dm is funnier it makes me laugh every time and you've been doing it for about two years i'll put up a post and if you <laughs> if you can't be fucked looking up a, now we have gifts you know or if you want to make me laugh, which it does every time, Angela writes hard DM. <laughs> it makes me giggle too. I was just I'm a bot. Don't do it when you're when you're on a lot because it might be like this person's active a lot, and now here's the spammy hard DM. Oh my god! I hard DM'd myself into jail. <laughs> I hard DM'd myself into jail. <laughs> you did, and we missed you when you were gone. So yes, I will be policing your movements <laughs> and making sure you don't go into jail again. So you're just gonna have to pace yourself. Don't like every time. comment. Maybe like yeah. come on for ten minutes at a time. <laughs> yeah, I. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to yeah calm yeah. my ass down I do I get way too like excited and I'm just like thank you thank you so much <laughs> oh, yeah. And, yeah you know and yeah so in your defense though okay and this is just I'm just gonna have a moment to be mad at Instagram Instagram makes a platform to connect us tries to connect Instagram puts you in jail for trying to connect and I'm just like it drives me nuts. Like, how the yeah. fuck are the spammers and the bots doing all of this and still doing it? And then we're just, like, over here with our regular lives. I've also been in Instagram prison before. <laughs> not oh. for a month. Not for a yeah, month. Yeah, but yeah. It was, like, Dude. literally I'd liked 100 posts or something, and it was, like, and I it gave me, it, like, unhearts it, but I didn't notice it. Because that's oh your yes, if you do a heart and it unhearts. That's a warning from Instagram. <laughs> Instagram's like you've liked too many, and I forbid you to like this post. Right, like what? Yeah, like let us live, Instagram. Let us live. Do you? We're want out here doing platform it or not? <laughs> it was hard. It was strangely hard. Yeah, um, it would. Thank be. God I could do like DMs yeah. and like share on my stories, yeah. but not actually. Being able to communicate in comments and like people's posts killed mm. me because it was like, 
I was seeing things and I wanted to like, yeah, be like, oh, I like that. Like, oh, thumb, you know, but I could not. And imagine and, how many people thought you hated them. <laughs> 100. That's why I was like, oh my God. I'm just teasing because no. I, I would worry about that too. You did a yeah. lot of damage control. Like, guys, I can't be online, you know, rah, rah, rah. I'm just teasing because I know that would plague me too. <laughs> it did. I And I got on the phone with Instagram. Did I you? called them. Yes, I did. And, and you got an answer? Yeah, I don't remember how. Did your we see orb that? moth just flew into your mouth or something? <laughs> <laughs> and now your magical powers are going to awaken. <laughs> no, I won't do this. Not on the eclipse Can day. You please find what it is, because that time I definitely thought it was a moth, and it just about went in your mouth. I think you've got an infestation. There's no moth control. here. What I'm wondering, is it like little specks of dust? That's what I was thinking that they felt. What have you got something? What's your camera? The computer one? Yeah. Hmm. Who knows? But that one anyway. was close. It was very close. They're coming. I they're felt coming it. Enter you now. <laughs> I've got chills. Um. Yeah, I don't know. But um, tell, I wanted to ask, tell us a bit about your cover. How Since we're like coming coming in hot for cover release. Oh. Tell us oh, about yeah. how that came about for you. Like, were you much involved with it? What a fun question, Melanie. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm That's so good. <laughs> uh, ADHD yeah. works in our favor sometimes. It's just like. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. So, like, with both times, Sinner's Isle and mm. this one, um, with Sinner's Isle, I had, like, I had, like, 20 pages of, like, information pictures I had taken <laughs> you know oh, I all remember it was I, I was, loved it though yeah it and thorough. they and and they were great like um I yeah. was you know like uh you're designated I guess is the word but like you're given a designer a special designer part of the Penguin Random House team mm -hmm. and so they start coming up with ideas and they like I got a few different samples of like body language um you know and like what worked good for Sinner's Isle. And so we would like narrow it down. It was myself, my editor, Bria, my agent, Larissa. And then, and then she would go in with the Yoons and Wendy who like all part of the bigger team. Yeah. Yeah. And so we were narrowing it down into like mm. the three designs and then we would narrow it down into, okay, well, what designers or what artists do you like? And yeah. so she, they give me all these options mm. and I would choose like my top three. Um, and so like, it was just always like constant options and then mm -hmm. whittling it down and then kind of the team all talking, but we've all been really on the same page. Mm. Um, or the, the same cool cover, if you will. Yes. The same cover page <laughs> with a cruel thirst. It was interesting though, because we were like right in the middle. Like I had written that the first draft or like, you know, and given yeah. it to them and I had, they had come back with all these edits. And so mm -hmm. we were like in the middle of shifting the entire book into something different. And so I wasn't exactly sure like what the book was when we started working on the cover. Mm -hmm. um, but I did know who, who you know, Carolina and Lalo were. Like that has never changed. Mm -hmm. And um, and so, uh, you know, I was just, they were like, okay, give me, you know, key symbols, key things about the book. And so a lot of the things at first didn't even end up in the book. <laughs> and so I was stressed like, oh, no. Am I going to be shocked when I read the final? Am the I fi oh, it's way different. Way different. It's way different. I hope. I think. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure it's different from what you, you've read. And so uh, mm. so I was nervous like, oh, no, we're going <laughs> to we're going to put a cover that makes no sense. But it yeah. but what I did get was two different options. One was of what we have now, like the, of uh, Carolina and Lalo together, like their faces together. And then another one was just like a bullhorn and daggers, you mm. know, like no, no characters on the cover. And um, both were really cool, like way cool. And so, you know, we were kind of going over like, okay, do we, do we not want to have the characters on the cover mm. with this one? Do we want to just have this like cool symbolic stuff? 
And I honestly would have been really happy with either. Mm. But um, but the way the designer or artist like positioned them with the dagger around the throat, it was so cool. And so then cool. so cool. And then we landed on Evie and Tan, who is the, the artist. Yeah. And <laughs> oh my gosh, let's get them on. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah, that'd be so cool because she's, yeah. she's done some amazing covers. You know, I love having illustrators on. Let's get her yeah. on. That's a great idea. Yeah, she just followed me. So that'd be fun. <gasps> yes. um, let me just make sure I'm I'm getting their pronouns right because yeah, I, I was gonna that's um I didn't want to assume either. Yeah, yeah. Uh okay, Evie and Tan. But then again, oh, I find oh, that oh, these... cool. It doesn't say um her pronouns, but she's from Melbourne. Melbourne. So Stop. Is she? How cool is that? Okay. That is very cool. We're definitely getting her on now. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, but yeah, so once I I saw like the colors, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, this is gonna be so sick. And it was just like very <laughs> like a plain rendering. Sorry, you then... just reverted to high school Montreal. This is gonna be sick. I love that. <laughs> so you it took just me came right out. back to high school. It came out. The pure it's gonna be sick. It's yeah. going to be the bomb. Fully be the sick, bomb. bro. It was going to be fully <laughs> sick. <laughs> fully sick. Um, but yeah, but then she she rendered it and added all these like tiny oh details gosh, and yeah. the coloring. And I about shit my pants. <laughs> I, I about shit. shit my pants when I saw it too. It's fucking, <laughs> I'm like, it is glorious. It, it's, it's the one. It's the one. It's so cool. Be. Oh my God. And it, the cover's fucking sick. But yeah. the interior mm -hmm. is so it makes me so excited as well because it's like yeah. uh like Lalo he, you know turns into a vampire, but he's like searching through all of this like documents and trying to learn yeah. about vampires. Mm. And so there's like these little snippets, these little pages like torn off of the things he's found. And so like it's like little documents that he's written on or captured and so yeah, it's cool. Oh my. So big up to the team, to the design and artist team, because it's not me. <laughs> I mean, it is you though, because your stories inspired that art, you know, like okay. that's a, it's a, it's a marriage of creative spirit. Yes. Oh <laughs> it's yes. Big it's big magic. It's big magic. Big magic. It is big magic. We love big magic. Yeah. No, I cannot so. wait for this to hit. And like, I think I feel like it's exciting for this one to hit as well and how many people will discover Sinner's Isle as well from like a new a new release yeah. as well. You're going to have fans. The fans are going to go wild. I'm so I'm just excited to see what's going to happen with this one. I feel I feel a tremor in the world. I feel yeah. a quake in the YA clock. <laughs> my yeah, my loins are quaking. Um <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting and it's really exciting to see you talk about it and see like how alight you are because it's yeah. and that's the thing and I think I remember read because I read like quite an early copy but I remember the like my my biggest feedback was these characters feel so real and so fully mm -hmm. fleshed out so regardless of the story that happened around that 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 happens around them I think that they were just always so perfect and and yeah. I cannot wait to read the final and and just see it come out into the world it's still a ways off but I feel why do I yeah. feel like it's next month <laughs> I know right it's it's wild yeah nope we have your book to celebrate next month yeah. which is is nuts it's happening so it's I can't happening. wait I had a I nice little buy. moment this week because I was like yeah you know like we're talking about not knowing what to expect and especially like being that it's part of an anthology like I've no I have no like nothing to compare from you know and yeah. But I kind of had this, you know, I'm such an emo. I was just like in the bathroom taking my makeup off. And I was just like, oh, yeah, like it's like a month till it comes out. I was like, wow. <laughs> I had this like little dorky moment with myself and I came out of the bathroom crying. <laughs> and my Aww. husband was like, he's used to it. <laughs> me crying over like every little thing so he just smiled at me. He, he didn't even know because he just knows that and he, he knows I'm going to share anyway. <laughs> it's coming he knows it's coming he knows it's coming but I just I think the the thing that made me so excited and moved this week was when I realized of everything I've written to date 
if there was one thing, one thing that I could pick to have published, it would be this. Wow. And I was like, wow, that's cool that it found a place, especially given how odd it is. (laughs) But it's also like that the core of the story is like a very, it's like, yeah, I don't know if I could write something like that again. And that's okay. I'm actually, I'm so glad I've read stuff like Big Magic to be like, I don't actually need to top that. That's would never be my goal. And it's quite it's quite different from other stuff I've written. Like it's, it's dark. It's like deals with a very dark concept and, but yeah, like it's, it's powerful. And like, I'm kind of like, you know, Liz Gilbert, she talks about how like an idea picks you and it comes to you. And it's like, I really feel that with that book that like this idea came and it just consumed me and I wrote it and I was like, Whoa, where did that come from? But, you know, like all my rage, (laughs) you know, all my desire to protect and like, like Ambika was talking about, like some of the injustices of the world, sometimes all you can do is write, you know. Mm. And, Mm -hmm. and yeah, I just, it was so cool to have that moment of like, of everything I've written, if I could pick one thing, it would be this to publish. And so I was like, yeah, well, that's cool, bitch, because it's coming out next month. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and whatever, I don't know what to expect from this pub house or the experience, but whatever happens, like, it's going to be available. And you better believe I'm going to find every way to, like, scream it from the rooftops and, like, well, you hell know, yes. it's going to be oh, there. Yes. It's exciting. Yes. Oh, my gosh. You get to hold your book, like, in in a month, in less yeah. than a month. I'm probably going to be dorky and buy like 50 copies or something. You have to. It's mandatory. I go hard. When I had my indie book published, I think I bought a box of 50 books. (laughs) Why not? Right? Like, and for one, it's you're supporting your your book. (laughs) And I got, you know what? I've only got two copies left. Like all of them found homes and like, and it's so funny because for such a small like experience that that was but it was also big my first little middle grade book like I still have people contact me about it and I was like I think a lot of that is because I just was like screaming from the rooftops with it it's that excitement that you just had for your cover that I'm like that that's kind of the magic of it all you know like you can't like replicate that when it's when it's passion Yes, that I think that's it. It's like, mm. because we get so many no's and, and the, you know, bad mm. news and, you know, sad, depressing things and careers, you know, there's just yeah. so much when it comes to writing. So it's like, these moments, the joy is what it truly is all about. And it's like, mm-hmm. yes, celebrate it and live in yeah. that joy. Because, you know, it's like, it's something that you work so hard on and now it's coming and it's here Mm. and um god it's it's so it's so cool and so it's like big magic it truly is big magic yeah and I'm really realize I'm noticing with myself how much mindset plays a part in like just my day-to-day mental health and well-being like like if I'm feeling I get so easily overwhelmed and I'm so sensitive but what I'm realizing is And this is why meditation is so powerful for me. If I take a moment to ground myself and head check or like whatever it is, intrusive thoughts or like, you know, I mean, mostly intrusive thoughts, right? Like just feelings (laughs) of general despair or whatever it is. Like if I actually pause and take a moment to ground myself, I'll be like, ah, it's just a feeling and it's going to pass. So just weather it. And then you can kind of reframe your whole day like, and last night I was having like a little emo moment. I was just sitting there. I was like, oh. And then I was like, it's really cold. I was like, yes, it's cold. And I was like, and then I, I kind of just sat there and I was like, you could make a fire. It's so cold. So I like lit my fire because we've got a fireplace in this apartment, which is just still mind blowing to me. It's crazy to have a city apartment with a, it's so rare. Mm. And I lit a fire and you'll see my reel later. <laughs> I made a oh. reel. I lit a fire and I sat by my fire and I read a book instead of like, oh. but it it like took this moment of like, I'm having like an emo board moment, but like, yes, you are. Do you want to sit with that? Or do you want to do something else? Like kind mm. of asking those questions from like, almost like a, like a higher, older, smarter version of yourself. Like, Ooh. hey, Melanie, how are you feeling? <laughs> you know? <laughs> and like that kind of head check I'm finding is really changing how I approach a lot. And it's really helpful in writing and like, yeah. especially in the, 
yeah, like I think that, you know, it's something we've both worked on, reframing like, and it's like you said, it's not about just just accepting like the things are negative. It's just like making the most of things that aren't changeable. If you can't yeah. change something, but what can I do? Instead yes. of just being like, ho-hum, this sucks, life is shit. Well, it's like, no, life isn't shit. <laughs> like, it's not shit, mate. Like, just take a second, like, realize all you have and work with that, you know? Yeah, no, it's it's huge. It changes so much. And, mm. you know, obviously it comes from a space of, like, privilege because at the end of the day, yeah. if you are if you have a home and you're warm and you're not in yeah. danger, like, you have, you can shift that 100%. space. Sometimes you just can't, but, like, yeah. But no, truly, like the other day, I I knew I needed to mow the lawn and mm-hmm. I was ho humming about it because it takes a while. And I was like, ah, oh, I got to get gas. I got to do this. But yeah. then I started like trying to shift it. Well, I have a freaking lawn mm. that I and because I have a home. Yeah. It, like I'm lucky to have yeah. these things. It's not that big a deal. Like I get to, I get to mow the lawn because yeah. I have the freaking lawn. Like that's you know? exactly what I'm taught. It was literally that moment. I was like grumpy about nothing and just like being able to be like, but I have a home. You know, like yes, there's like mundane things that I can like complain about and whatever. But yeah, it was literally that of like, or you could just like cherish the moment instead of looking for things to pick apart. And yeah, I've been fine. Again, you're right. It's not always helpful. And like, sometimes it can be toxic positivity, I guess, (laughs) but like, sometimes it's what we've got, you know? Yeah. We are just trying to survive (laughs) at this point. We are just trying to get to the goods. (laughs) I'm all for injecting like good energy into the world. And like, oh, it's like, you know, our stickers, I I've mentioned this on, um, on Instagram, but like one of the baristas at a local cafe, they put up our sticker on, like, I was all shy. Cause I went in to grab coffee and like, and I was fully decked out in publishing persuasion gear. And I was like, I don't usually go. And I had my mug and I had my t-shirt and I had the earrings I'd made. <laughs> so they kind of <laughs> looked at me and they're like, like, dang girl. And I was like, I felt the need to explain. I was like, oh yeah. I was like, that is my face on my chest. I was like, oh, it's my podcast. I was like, we're about to record our hundredth episode and rah, rah, rah. And like a lot of people don't, they're just good energy people there. And Henry, we love, we must protect we, Henry yeah. at all costs. Like we love Henry. Made we love such Henry. a fuss. I was like overwhelmed in the best way. And then I gave Henry a sticker. And when I came back, so unexpected it was stuck up on the register at the cafe and, and written on it was check out the podcast with love hearts. And And I was just like that. That's the energy I want to put out into the world. You know, like it's not always perfect, but that made my day that made me like, yeah, let's, let's do this episode. Like rah, rah. And it's just, yeah. Sometimes you don't have that to put in, but like, I think the Henry's of the world remind me why I try, you know? Yeah. I love (laughs) that. Like be a Henry for somebody. Be a Henry. Be a Henry. (laughs) And and because it, you know, and we, we touch on this with Ambika, like Mm. being on social media as a writer is, can be such a task and such an awkward like space of like, why am I even here? Like, you know, this, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so people who are are doing it and are succeeding and like be the cheerleaders for for people who are coming up and you know like I love that I love that just like encouraging yeah you know sometimes all you need is like an ex a few extra exclamation points a few yeah. hearts and and it makes your whole day and so I you know and I think I always speak for Melanie when I say like yeah <laughs> that, that is the goal for yeah. us is to that little exclamation point at the end, when you're listening, the little heart emoji, uh, you know, because, because it's, it's not easy all the time, all the things, uh-huh. just life, but all the things when it comes to writing and craft and getting your book out there, it's just um, human scary. existence, just yeah. like, just the human condition, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, dude, you should have like, because we had the eclipse today and we, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did did you guys see it in Australia? I don't know. I probably slept through it. Oh, yeah. I have no idea. But but it was, of course, of course, the America, the states, people had to like go into all of these conspiracy theories and all of these yeah. like, you know, you know how we do over here. Oh, they and thought so it was, was the end. 
They yeah. thought oh, it was the apocalypse. Uh, they did. They uh, really, really did. You know. Eclipse uh, 1000 on and yeah. Eclipse 1031 was going to yeah. be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Knock yeah. on wood. Knock on wood. But, but it was just like <laughs> one of those moments where I was like, wait, is this, is this going to be it? But then I was like, yeah, you know. That's religious trauma. I'm sorry. I'm just going to call it. <laughs> I know. And I'm not going to pretend I don't still feel that sometimes. Yeah. I was like, working well, through it. Yeah. Yes. It's scary. But, um, you know what it is yeah. when the whole fucking nation is like, because it's like you can kind of talk yourself through it. But then when there's all these people around you freaking out, they're like, apocalypse now. You're like, shit, <laughs> like this many yeah. people. No, but it's funny because I saw Jill too, who we had mm-hmm. on last week. Yeah. She, she, her and her family drove to go see it. So I was like, well, yeah. Jill's over there. It's fine. You know, she's smart. Yeah. She knows, she knows probably the apocalypse isn't coming. So, you know, she was my heart emoji, my exclamation point, because I thought if Jill's doing it, we're good. Mm. We're That's um, so true. It just takes one good motherfucker, one exclamation point sometimes. Cause that's yeah. the thing. Fear is contagious, but so is hope. And so Ooh. is joy. And, yes. and I think that's something that's made me try really hard to be a more positive person because, like, I naturally am a super emo kid. But I, I would see the Henrys of this world and I'd be like, I want to be someone's exclamation mark, somebody's reason to, like, feel like they're less afraid today, not more afraid, you know? I love that. So, yeah. Well, speaking of someone that made us feel less afraid, less alone yeah. in the world, and just all around excited for yeah. this bookish world, we had on an amazing guest, and I'm just going to let Melanie read her bio. I don't bio. have the bio in front of okay. me. So it's all <laughs> well, then you. I'm going to read the bio. Um, <laughs> also, I read it last week, you bad girl. All right, fine. <laughs> we had an amazing guest. We had Ambika Vora Nagino, writing mm. as A.A. A. Vora, uh, um, is an Indian Japanese author born in M- Mumbai and based in Tokyo. After receiving a bachelor's in economics from Princeton University and an MBA from the University of Cambridge, she worked in management management consulting with a focus on digital transformation and healthcare. Outside work, she is a fervid Naruto fan. Naruto? Naruto. Naruto. Naruto fan who enjoys competitive Pokemon battling with her husband, playing with her newborn, and going on runs with her... uh, Spitz dog, Fionor. Fionor. I can't see it. I oh. don't have it in front of me, my friend. I don't know where it is. You didn't well, send the usual no. file. What am I meant yes, to do? Yes, I did. It's did right you? under, it's right above the questions with her huh. dog. In the email. Fionor. Fionor. No, it's not in the, oh, I think it is in the email as well, but. <laughs> um. <laughs> I don't it's I have there. no clue where it is. It's there. But I don't but have the word Google Doc. I only It's on it. there. It's fine. Whatever, wherever it is, <laughs> I read the bio and I did a great job. You did a, an exceptional job. <laughs> and so did Amvika when we interviewed her. She's a light, a joy. She's so she stinking smart. Um so smart. Uh, yeah. So smart. Her book sounds fabulous. So yeah. Um, I apologize for not knowing how to say. You just Naruto. need to fake it till you make. No, you said it fine. I was just giving okay, you shit. <laughs> you said it the American way, Naruto. 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 <laughs> Naruto. That sounds Australian. No. Oh, Naruto. that's not it. <laughs> Say <laughs> hello, Melanie, Hi. Angela. So nice to see your beautiful faces early this morning. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. What time is it again over where you are? It's actually just 8.30, so it's not early. I, like, calculated based on New York time. I'm sorry. Um, uh, yeah, no. I'm so perfect. used to using that one, so <laughs> that was my bad. But no. no. We're and glad to add it worked to confusion, out. Angela's daylight savings changed two weeks ago, and mine changed last night. So we were all <laughs> unsure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have daylight savings, so, yeah, it was – Yeah. Anyway <laughs> – we make it work and um it's it's fun to be like in this global uh world of writers because we're just all across the globe it's pretty fun um your yeah. your back your cover behind you your background is gorgeous it matches your book cover that is Thank so you. cool yeah. 
it's the wraparound. Um, I was frantically, because my house is a bit of a mess, so I was frantically searching for images on my desktop, and this was all I had, so. Um, I mean, it's working. Yeah. <laughs> it's That's funny. perfect. I love that idea. I think I'm going to have to do that myself on those messy yeah, days. I'm, That's good. I'm trying to take tips from Angela in becoming more, I guess, just better at marketing. Marketing. <laughs> your, your pro. I mean, she is a pro. <laughs> That's, it's a wise choice. <laughs> Yes. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. So you're in Japan, right? Yes. Yes, I am. I'm in Tokyo. Yeah, that's so cool. What part? So I used to live around um, Shinjuku, but oh, yeah. um, recently I, I bought a house kind of more towards the suburb, a bit more of a child-friendly suburban neighborhood. So yeah, we're slowly kind of moving, moving out of the city center. Mm, very cool. Mm-hmm. So go this. Arigatou <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, mother, mother. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Wow. Uh. Hey, Angela mentioned that you visited Tokyo or you lived here, was it? I lived in a camping van traveling around for six months. <laughs> hmm. Wow, whereabouts? We started in like Tokyo area and then we went down to like Kyushu and like all the volcanic area, which was like active. It was like there was areas we had to avoid while we were traveling down there because it was like a volcano is going off, (laughs) which is just like hectic. It's like such a lesser known of Japan, uh, lesser known part overseas that side. But in my opinion, it's like one of the most fascinating. There's so much there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just I had a tsunami evacuation a couple of days ago because I was in Okinawa there was the earthquake in Taiwan and we were in a small island so it was quite it was quite stressful because I had my baby with me but yeah Mm. I mean fortunately nothing happened at least in Japan but yeah yeah earthquakes you kind of get used to living here but yeah volcanoes tsunamis all that is still a bit you know can be a bit It's real. Like before we went, I didn't realize like how real it was, but living there for six months, it's like, no, now there's a typhoon warning. Now you can't go near the beach because the waves are coming up onto the road. (laughs) Now you can't like there is, it's very volcanically active, but I love it so much. I'm convinced I was Japanese in a past life, maybe. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I love that. Yeah. (laughs) but yeah now that uh, we'll, we'll get to other random questions I just had to gush about right. Japan for a second no I, I would love to keep talking about that like we yeah. can forget my book and just talk about it anyways um <laughs> anime, but yeah I love it I love listening to it. I was I spent one night in Tokyo and and it was so fun it was so fun so mm. lots of good food um but let's get into a little bit more about you the fun nitty-gritty of who you are, Um, our first random fact we love to know is what is the strangest thing you own? Okay, Um, I have an entire shelf of things that might be considered strange. So I'll just like random ones. Like I have this this kunai from Naruto, um, like literally right in front of me. I have um, a copy of of the Death Note. I don't know if either of you are familiar with that manga. Um, I don't write anything with it. I just, I have it. (laughs) I love that you qualif- you specified that for our non anime yeah, yeah. listeners. The Death Note is an anime where you literally like write someone's name in it, and then they're gonna die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, it's a bit unhinged to just have that, you know, on my desk. But it's it's, it's just, I have like oh this really God. random Pokeball terrarium that someone gifted me. Yeah, I just I don't know. Um, I have a. It's not it's not here, so I can't show it to you because it's a bit heavy. But I have the um the Weta Workshop um, miniature of Minas Tirith, the original one, which I am a bit obsessed with. So I have that, um, which my husband recently, um, he broke off a piece. Oh. So I'm quite livid about that, um, completely by accident. And his his kind of defense was like, oh, well, you know, when the orcs attacked Minas Tirith, like they also <laughs> broke off parts of the tower. And um, this was obviously the correct argument to win me over because I had no response to that. I was like, okay, mm-hmm. sure. Um, but okay, yeah, so but I, I feel... Of- I feel like that would have been the perfect time to pull out one of my favorite Japanese words, yurusanai. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what I told them. But Which, like, for our non-Japanese listeners, native... it's unforgivable. Yeah, yeah. I'll never forgive you. But... It's one of my favorite words. <laughs> yeah, you hear you hear that in, in anime a lot. I feel like zetta yurusanai. So mm. yeah. well, I'm so married to him. So he I love it. this. <laughs> I'm learning a lot. I feel like I'm learning a lot. And what I really like is that you have all of these things that you just love. 
and that, you know, I'm sure just inspire you every day, just looking at it, which I adore. Um, I'm learning, I'm learning about anime and, and things. Oh, and I- Angela <laughs> is Yuru Sanai with how fast slash slow she's learning about anime. Yeah. <laughs> Yuru, Yuru Sanai. <laughs> Slowly getting there. I'm working on it. Have you have you watched any at all, or is it like still? Um. Oh, does Attack on Ta- uh, Attack on Titan counts? Right? That counts. No, absolutely. Also, yeah. That's one of my all time favorites. Um, yeah, we watched it my, during like lockdown. Uh, the my kids got into it, and I just mm. like walked by the the living room, and I saw it, and I was like. Mm. what is this like what the hell is this actually like yeah. Yeah, it yeah. was so bizarre but I had to watch every episode and um yeah so yeah it it, it like sucks you in the That's writing a is a place to start though attack on time <laughs> I would say really... yeah it's like you start fantasy by reading game of thrones like that's kind of the yeah the cool, like, <laughs> jumped in just jumped in yeah <laughs> I learned I learned uh what is something you think about way too often that's interesting because actually it is about Attack on Titan. Um, <laughs> the manga ended, I think it was like a year or like a few months ago. And I had been following it for close to a decade, perhaps. Mm-hmm. So the ending, um, I don't know how far along you've gotten. So I don't want to spoil also for listeners. But the ending was quite tragic is one word of saying it. Um, so I spent a lot of time envisioning alternate endings for it and the characters and like certain decisions that they may have made that could have played out differently and just the whole the moral debate surrounding it I find it quite fascinating um so that's actually something I I devote yeah um unhealthy amounts of time thinking mm-hmm. about like Eren and you know Mikasa and just a lot of yeah mm-hmm. Attack on Titan related things so I can see why because yeah. truly I mean it goes deep and it goes dark and it does it touches on themes that almost feel taboo in many ways and so yeah they mm. went there yeah he he went there and I I I mean again the ending was quite I think polarizing but I enjoyed that like I like it when you know an ending really sparks debate or a character does things that you know really make you make you judge them or wonder and even hate them sometimes like that's to me that's just super interesting so mm. yeah it makes it, sense that you would be rewriting the endings and then being a writer so then that leads me to our next question did you always want to be a writer um subconsciously I think yes um I never really published anything prior to this um I never even really wrote fan fiction so no actually so I wrote some fan fiction but I never I never realized that you could like publish it online which is probably good because what I wrote was rubbish so (laughs) I think my first was like in middle school, my friend and I were 11 and we wrote this um, book most originally titled The Fantasy. Mm -hmm. And it was basically, I think the the Lord of the Rings movies had come out. So we were both these heroines, the long lost princesses of Gondor, um, Eldarion sisters, who actually exist according to the appendices. So it wasn't like a completely made up character. And we were like living in our world and these two Legolasses came through like a portal Mm -hmm. or something. And they fell in love with us because we were perfect. And of course. Like, of course. Yeah, yeah. And there were two because we didn't want to be like rivals in a love triangle. <laughs> yes. And it was just this the most like, yeah, there was like a Legolas green leaf for me and like my friend loved Orlando. So his hers was like Legolas bloom. And it was just the most contrived thing with like cliches and just like Nazgul and stuff. And it was just, I don't even know. So I definitely like, I had like a couple of these just very... Um, I, I don't know the word, but yeah, like self insert kind of things that I wrote for myself, but I, I never really um, published them anywhere or shared them with anyone beyond like maybe just one or two friends. Um, I, I just I wasn't really aware of the fanfic culture at the time. I think had I been aware of it, I probably would have been sucked into it. It's just not something I ever was exposed to. Um, and then I think when it came to writing professionally, I always loved um, English, but I think it was just because of like societal pressure mm-hmm. um, living in India and also for financial reasons that, you know, in, in high school, I I switched majors from, I mean, not majors, sorry, but when it, when it came to like my subject choices, I tended to gravitate towards the hard sciences. And then in university, I switched majors um, from English and comparative literature um, and creative writing to economics. 
So my thesis was like the blandest thing ever. It was about like the trade deficit in Japan. Um, and I, I, hated, I hated writing it. Um, and then I ended up kind of refusing a journalism internship for a management consulting one. So I think all along I made these risk averse choices that, you know, seemed financially prudent because mm. even though I wanted to maybe spend my time writing, I just didn't think I would be able to support myself and my family, um, my future family through it. Mm. But and I, I think actually trying to become published was was an almost weird thing because it was just like writing this book was something that I was doing because I was working in an entirely Japanese environment. And I just I wanted to. I wanted to English like I wanted to like write and like express myself in English because it was quite frustrating not being able to do that on a daily basis and I ended up just spending a lot of time after work where I was you know I was done with work but I had to wait for like my boss to finish his work or like you know we would we would have like a client dinner and karaoke starting at like 9 p.m so I had a few hours to kill um in like near our client site which was like in rural Japan so it was just more of this like catharsis of like English and like just this desire to kind of escape this like quite stressful corporate environment. And that's what really got me um, to start writing. And somehow that led to, you know, a publication deal. So, yeah, wow. it, was, it was kind of unexpected. Wow. You know, I mean, honestly, that's pretty fascinating. Yeah. Like, like you said, I wanted to English and I, I kind of love that. Like you just needed something different for your brain. Mm -hmm. uh, to kind of focus on it. And, and it turned into a book eventually. Can you tell us a little bit about your publishing journey? Like, how did we go from writing to where you are now? Yeah, so I think it started because I had this, um, I had an engagement manager in one of my companies who was also a huge fantasy fan. And in Japan, obviously, I have a lot of, um, you know, friends who love like manga and anime, but like English fantasy is is not something that any of my friends really know. So I was super excited to talk to him about it and we kind of like he talked about how he was actually writing his own um book and then we ended up kind of sharing our books and he was actually one of the people who kind of told me that this has some merit and maybe it's worth you know giving it giving it a shot and then that's when I so I started the whole querying process and I um I was unsuc unsuccessful for about five or six years I think I had something between 150 to 200 queries but eventually I um, I landed my agent and we expected another few years um, and like multiple revisions before landing a deal just because up till then it had been quite tedious and cumbersome. Mm -hmm. But somehow we got an overnight deal um, with wow. Putnam, yeah. so that Penguin Random House. And um, yeah, they just kind of over, they, they gave us pretty much a deal within like my editor read it within a day and he was like, we want this. And he spoke to um, his publisher, um, Jennifer Konsky, who was absolutely lovely and super supportive. So they asked for like, hey, do you have an idea of like how this is going to play out? And I had mostly the whole trilogy and a potential prequel kind of planned out quite meticulously um, with the entire plot and the character arcs from start to finish. So I shared this like super detailed Word document in an Excel file. And yeah, they gave me a preemptive offer like on Monday. Like I shared this like over the weekend, I think. And then on Ooh. Monday I had a preemptive for a trilogy so it was it was quite like the, the difference in like the speed of progression from like five years of like nothing to like bam overnight deal it was it was quite unexpected um mm. I literally yeah, it, just it, it, read I think something like publishing is either a famine or a flood <laughs> yeah <laughs> I was, I was oh, just like that is facts <laughs> it just like when it rains it pours but there's yeah, like absolutely. all those years when you were like suffering beforehand like when, when it's like in retrospect and it's like a fact of like, oh, 200 queries that were rejections now, but like you lived through that and that's major. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know how, but yeah. like, I feel like sometimes it, it's funny, like I wake up because, you know, when you're querying, you have this, you wake up every day with this like, like visceral sense of dread in your stomach and it's like all knotted up. I still have like these weird, like, I think calling it trauma would be, would be extreme, mm -hmm. but I have these Sometimes I wake up in the morning with that sense of dread and then I have I to call remind it myself, trauma. Oh, I like, call it trauma. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the querying is over. You have an agent, you're fine. Like you have a publishing deal. Calm down. Like it's just yeah, it's just one of those things that it stays with you. Like I also check my phone at like 3 a.m. because of trauma from my corporate job. So it's just I'm still trying to like condition myself out of this like mm. behavior, but 
yeah it just, no it's I appreciate not... like, let's not play it down I appreciate as someone in the query trenches I appreciate the word choice of trauma because it is like you literally start to like I've had to meditate my way out of that compulsive checking because like yeah it it lives with you otherwise as like this heavy thing and it's like hard to keep doing it for ages but you did the thing and here you are with these glorious well-deserved things happening was there anything about this so far that surprised you about publishing? I think um, probably and surprised and also probably because I'm just bad at it. But the way marketing is done in this notion that authors are kind of public figures on social media who promote mm -hmm. their books and reveal, you know, bits of their personal life was a bit jarring to me at first because in Japan, like most mangaka and authors, they're quite private. Um, mm -hmm. You never really see or hear about them outside, you know, interviews like this one. Some may run like a obscure blog where they post on occasion, but like pen names are common. Often you don't know the gender of the mangaka. You don't really see their face. So my family and friends found it quite odd. Um, Once, you know, I started my social media and I was kind of required to promote my book and like that too, like year, like months or like even a year before the release date. So they were always wondering like, why, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. um, so I think, um, and again, it's something like I'm trying to, learn and like get better at like again people like Angela are an inspiration and it's it's mm -hmm. just really like the fact that the two of you have put so much effort into this you know um this whole like um podcast thing and like uplifting you know authors like myself who don't really have our own platforms I mean it, it just it means a lot um mm -hmm. so I'm so grateful for that it's just yeah I think I think I still struggle because I never really cared about the author's that I read when I was a kid and I can't imagine what teenagers would find exciting about like a 30 year old <laughs> woman's life but um I, I don't know I'm trying to adapt to changing yeah. time I realize yeah. that makes me sound a lot older than I am but um no. I guess yeah I, I, I don't know I think I would have preferred to remain a bit more ambiguous like that's why I actually chose a pen name that was fairly ambiguous like my full name is um Ambika Bora Nagino but I'm writing as A.A. Bora which I am now realizing could have been a disadvantage because especially in YA, I think there is a lot of dialogue around author identity. And I, I got a couple of messages after my um, cover reveal being like, are you actually Indian or are you just pretending? And I was like, oh, oh I think that um, oh, wow. so it was it was a bit odd. And I was kind of advised to be more transparent about my cultural roots, for lack of a better word, which I have since done. But it's definitely something that um, you know, I'm, I'm realizing, you know, with changing times, authors kind of are required to be more transparent about their identity. It's just something I'm finding hard, you know, to reconcile with. And I'm not, I don't think I'm naturally gifted at, you know, having that kind of online, that dazzling online persona again, as Angela here. Um, so <laughs> yeah, no. I, I am. It's, so it's really, really hard. And it, and mm -hmm. what's interesting, I find in the young adult space in particular is there is more of a magnifying glass on the authors. And like you said, what do teenagers care about 30 mm. somethings? Like there's nothing that exciting happening. Um, but I, like, it's true in the middle grade and adult space, it's not, it's that magnifying glass isn't there so much, but young adult, it really is heightened and it's really interesting. I don't know mm. why it is. It's, um, but yeah, I felt, I feel like the pressure to be on social media is so real. And we hear it all the time. You don't have, you know, the advice, you don't have to be on social media to be an author. And it's true, but mm -hmm. we are very, very not pressured, but it's kind of like a, a, like a hidden, like you should be, you know, on there. Mm -hmm. And so it's interesting, but I feel like for me was what's kind of shifted was, my mindset about the whole thing. Like, I, I don't know how to really promo my book. I, I want to get better at that. I do need to work on that. But like, I do know how to, oh, thank you. But I do know how to like, you know, do funny reels or chat about whatever's going mm -hmm. on. And and from that, I've met other writers and 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 eventually readers. But um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a struggle. I think almost every yeah. writer probably mm -hmm. fights through. And I think it's also something, at least from the discourse I've seen, like, I mean, regardless of whether or not authors are gifted at it, it is a huge, I think, time 
and resource, you know, use yes. and it, it's effort. Like Angela, like what you do, I, I can see that it clearly requires so much thought and effort. So mm. I mean, yeah, I, I, I do. I do understand. I, I do understand it. And I, I think that's something where, you know, my, I, I do need to put probably more, um more, more effort into it. But yeah, there's also this idea about, you know, authors on social media, there, there are some people who I feel are a bit more what's the word not not condescending but perhaps like mm. why is this author like posting so many reels and again I think yeah. a lot of us have been put in that position by the yes. industry where we really have to we're, we're forced to do it mm. um again some people do an amazing job and just you know go with it and then there's some mm. people like me who struggle and maybe you know don't do as much as they should but yeah I, I think again it's just the the culture shock because in mm. Japan you pretty much never you never see this um so it was interesting to both me and my friends and family that oh you also like you're kind of trying to be like a not an influencer but yeah it's just but I really appreciate yeah. you sharing this because these conversations are so like we are all dealing with this and it's so like it can be so heavy and complicated and I think even just having this conversation lightens it so I really appreciate you sharing that with us because yeah that's real like and again like it may look like you know doing the podcast and whatever that it's easy, but like, no, like, like it's been daunting. Like I certainly yeah. didn't go into writing thinking, wow, I'm going to be on a podcast. I didn't even know what podcasts were. <laughs> I, I live with anxiety, but it was literally from this thing of like, I will fade into invisibleness in this modern era of writing. If I don't yeah. the way to be present. And, it, yeah. and unfortunately it's kind of seems that the way to have that presence these days is through social media and I couldn't because I was also one of those cynical people like oh it's so like who's gonna elevate themselves and like back in my early I was like why would you do that I totally get like that feeling of like oh Mm -hmm. like the early what are my friends and family gonna think but the more I did it the less I gave a shit (laughs) and the more I found like cooler people who found ways to like celebrate the weird parts of me that felt easy to promote Cause it is, yeah. a, that's why, that's why I also agree with you that Angela is a pro because what she does isn't really necessarily promote. She's just having fun and she drags you along for the ride. And I think that's what's successful in doing it. Yeah. But it's, no, it's like a, such a balance. It's, it's hard to do. Yeah. yeah like I, I could aspire, I would aspire to be like that cool and like that kind of, just, <laughs> you know, I'm going to. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'll, I will reach that point, but yeah, it's it's great to see someone out there who's I think genuinely putting out good content and genuinely mm. enjoying themselves. I I don't really I, I'm pretty much I begged my publisher to let me stay off social media, so I'm kind of <laughs> not um, using it um, yeah. there, but I'm not really using it just for compartmentalization and you know just time. But I I do remember when I was active, like your, your, your reels and things were always very, very amusing. So. Well, well, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you guys. (laughs) Um, Well, let, let me use my voice right now to boost your book because the cover and, and the synopsis, like everything looks gorgeous, just amazing. Can you give us um, our listeners like a little, a little blurb about what this book is about? Sure. Um, so um, my debut is a um, is the first in a YA trilogy. Um, it's called Spin of Fate. It comes out this May. So it's an original mythology. So by that, I mean that the world, the religion, the magical creatures, everything, it does draw a bit from, you know, India, Japan, but it's not really inspired by any particular country or time period or any of that. It's kind of a mixed bag like me. Um, so everything is pretty much made up. Um I think importantly, it features a hard magic system that's loosely um, based on the law of karma. So um, you have this kind of omniscient, omnipotent, um, ancient law of nature, of magic, that determines the morality of a human's actions and their intentions, So, which in turn has an effect on the spin of their soul. So if you do like, you know, good deeds and think positive thoughts, you have a positive spin, whereas um, to the contrary, you know, bad deeds and like you know bad thoughts have a negative spin so based on the spin of your soul so basically kind of your cumulative morality Mm -hmm. um you are then segregated into different realms with vastly different living conditions so it is essentially your social hierarchy setting but there's a twist in that it's your own morality that determines where you land 
and you can ascend and descend um, between realms based on your actions and your intentions. Um, of course, it's it's a lot more complicated and flawed um, than this in practice, so I don't really want to spoil further. But yeah, it is a fairly um, thematically heavy book, I think, with a lot of emphasis on the magic system mm -hmm. and how it affects the world and um, it shapes character motivations. The magic system is fairly, I don't know whether I'd call it complex because I do read a lot of Sanderson and his are like super complex, but um, it does follow kind of the rules of magic systems and this idea that you have to learn more about the magic's rules and limitations to kind of solve the plot, so to speak. So much of the book is about these three characters, um, three POV characters from different realms um, whose lives have been shaped in different ways because of the magic. And they um, they join a rebel group that's trying to work against the magic system. So rather than rebelling against a particular authority, they're kind of unhappy with the way that nature and magic is functioning. So, um, you know, and then they discover all these other layers and things um, that put their kind of entire universe at risk. I do a really boring job. Um, I try to describe no. this. No, it's so cool. It's so, so cool. cool. Now I wanna. Now that I've heard this, no, it's amazing. This pitch. Yes. I love this idea of karma as the basis of these wheels that spin either way. What inspired this amazing idea for you? Yeah. Um. So actually, it it is essentially I think the law of karma. So I my mom um, was reading the Bhagavad Gita um to Ooh. me. Um, that's one of the the Hindu um, religious, I mean, the epics. So you have Mahabharata, which is kind of the Indian, the, the big Indian epic around, along with the Ramayana. And there's a section in that, the Bhagavad Gita, which talks about um, karma, the law of karma. And this was something that was taught to me um, when I was a kid. And I always found the notion very interesting. And I think it did a relatively good job kind of, you know, because a lot of times you look at the world and you think that, oh, why do good people suffer? And why are some people, you know, born into such unfortunate circumstances mm -hmm. and then like ruminating on that it just really it drew me more into learning about the law of karma because it answers a lot of these things really nicely and um I write about this a little bit in my author's note but it to me it almost functions as a real world magic system like this mm -hmm. idea that you know there is some sort of a not god necessarily but some sort of a you know mystical force that you know because of your own like past actions you're kind of suffering the consequences in like later lives or like the benefits you're reaping the benefits as well um so for again for full disclosure my book is very loosely based on this so the magic system is quite twisted and flawed mm. um but I think over the course of the three books you kind of start to uncover the flaws and things start in to kind of fall in place um so I feel I feel I might spoil too much but Right. Yeah, I, I think really at the heart of it is this idea of karma and the magic system um, that hopefully over the course of the three books, I'll be able to kind of um, give some more depth to it. So wow. I need this fascinating. Book. Yeah, <laughs> it, it sounds, sounds so deep. Mm. I, I, I don't know. I, I try. I try. I, I do. I do sometimes worry that it might be a bit too thematically kind of heavy for YA readers, but I also think that, you know, it's great nowadays that you have like a range of books, like you have the more yeah. kind of lighter, faster paced fantasy. And then you have this, which, you know, I, I understand might not be, you know, everyone's cup of tea might be a bit boring to some people. But hopefully, yeah, if you are looking for something that is a bit more, you know, thematic and I don't I don't know, introspective, I don't know if that would be the right word, but. Hopefully. No, it sounds perfect. Like that's the time when those questions were at their peak for me as a young adult. That's when that, when you like wake up and you're like, oh shit, the world, <laughs> what do yeah. I do? I think that like the high stakes of YA, it's perfect for that. Oh, <laughs> all us little overthinking bookworms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, we need, I love that. Now when you, so you mentioned when you sold it, had you even started working on like the actual trilogy or was it just the first book? Like how was, how has it been writing beyond the first book? So when I sold it, I had the entire thing in a prequel plotted out and I had book two about half written. Oh, okay. So, and at this point, I actually book two, I finished, I think in 2022. Um, and then book three is about half written at this point, And the prequel is also about a fourth written though. I don't have any deal for the prequel. Well, this is just my hope that I will get a prequel at some point. We'll see. Yeah. Fingers um, crossed. Yeah. Um, so I think it's, I did want to plot everything because I wanted to include a lot of, you know, hints and, you know, Easter eggs and things like that. Um, but 
the struggle I think has been definitely scheduling because I would have liked things to move a lot faster than I think the way the publishing industry is set up the way it allows yeah, um, yeah. like one of the things that I struggled with was like my book one line edits came a week after I had given birth so I was kind of oh, just out of the hospital gosh. and like struggling to line edit which was not ideal timing but again that's kind of how the industry is I think no matter how much you plan ahead of an author you can't quite control your schedule so that's been a bit of a struggle um but I'm glad that I've at least got most of it written out yeah. um but yeah we'll, we'll see how the the release dates and everything go for the rest of it but yeah mm -hmm. publishing man publishing would you <laughs> yeah. say like what has been the hardest part in this journey for you would it be that or give us spill the tea what's been the hardest for you <laughs> I think for me, it was so originally this was positioned and conceptualized as adult, but for reasons I won't bore you with, it's being published as YA. Uh -huh. um, and I think the standards for YA in the West are quite different from like, let's say a YA manga in, in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, of course, I had to rewrite characters entirely, make them, you know, act and behave like teenagers, which was which was fine because I love teenagers, you know, rather than someone who's like centuries old. But Mostly the part that irked me was having to considerably simplify the magic system and world building because there was a lot more depth to it, a lot more complexity in the rules and the principle principles. And I think you can get away with this in anime and manga. They go like really deep into magic systems mm -hmm. um, and you can get away with it in adult fantasy. But in YA, there's always this push to cut down, streamline, make things more accessible, like fasten the pace. Which again, I understand. And I think I'm also at a point where it would be prudent to play by certain rules. Um, but and I, I already think my book is actually quite slow with quite dense world building for YA, which might, you know, alienate certain readers. But I think it's just I can I it just breaks my heart when I think of like all the rules and mythology that will probably never, you know, make it mm. to the page. Um, I'm trying to come to convince my publisher to let me do an appendix, but um I was gonna it's giving we'll like extra book for the listeners when they're craving more. It's like, well, well, I've yeah. already planned it. <laughs> we'll see. I think, yeah, I think it's just, I found a lot of the kind of rules, especially for YA a bit. Yeah. I understand them um, completely. I just, I find them a bit limiting. And I often find that you don't have to play by these rules in like manga, for instance, which is mm -hmm. kind of the genre I am gravitating towards so yeah it's been a struggle but I've also I've made a website that has like about 25 to 30 percent of the extra stuff like kind of a fun wiki page. oh so, yeah yeah if, if readers like finish my book and they want to read more they can always like choose to go to the website but then readers who don't care don't have to be bogged down by all of that extra you know information I love that, so, we'll see. I love um, that. I, that's genius yeah. I love that I adore that so much because people will people will want to know more and that's yeah. so cool did you want to tell our listeners what that website is? Um, yeah, sure. I mean, it's, it's funny because there were some issues in my book, which I don't want to get into, but somehow after I approved the manuscript, some things ended up getting accidentally deleted from the book. Um, but so we're kind of working on like seeing if we can, along with the kind of the fixes, get the website also kind of put into the book, but I, I'm not sure whether we can, but it is, um, it's called The Fifth Realm dot net so it's essentially the the series title dot net um so cool. yeah there's there's a lot of like character art as well that i've kind of done so it's it's mm -hmm. just kind of a self-indulgent thing that i put out there for anyone who yes. is interested um you we'll deserve see. to be self-indulgent you you've yeah. written these books i mean it's you why not like it yeah. you built this epic world might as well have the website for all of it too i see we're like down to three minutes in our time but what has been like the the most rewarding part of this whole experience for you? I think definitely seeing the cover and the maps come to life. So the design team at Putnam were so like inclusive when it came to like taking in my opinions and my feedback. Um, they were absolutely lovely to work with. And I, I realized that this is a privilege that not all authors get, but I had close to full control over what my cover Wow. Um, and my interiors would look like. So we went with um, Siddhar Chaturvedi, who did the, the Aragon illustrated version, actually. I, I have that oh, here. Yes. Um, so, yeah, I, I just, I, I really like, he has this, like, really classic old fantasy style that I love. Um, he does, like, the cards for Magic the Gathering and just a lot of things, a lot of fandoms that I love. So um, that was great. And for the map as well, actually, I drew my own map and then I sent the sketches to the map artist who, like, elevated it beyond anything I would ever be capable of. So 
it was just really lovely seeing someone with like infinitely more talent than I have, like mm -hmm. take my like terrible little sketches and like just turn them into something um wonderful. So yeah, and I think I was just really blessed with the people I worked with at Putnam for being kind of just so receptive to what I wanted. So yeah. Wow. I cannot wait to see it all. And for what's the release date again? Um, May 7th. Oh, very soon. Oh my gosh. We're soon. Yeah. Honestly, are you doing anything to celebrate? Um, no, it's a bit difficult in Japan. And unfortunately, we don't really have any launch events planned. So I think it's going to be quite low key. I might take the opportunity to just spend some time away from the internet and kind of focus on my family. Um, yeah. I've not really been able to do that as much as I would want because mm. publishing does put interesting constraints on your work-life balance, which mm. even a 70 hour corporate job did not quite have that <laughs> um, level of chaos. So yeah, that's I real. That's real. Well, we'll be celebrating for you. We will yeah. be cheering for you and your book all the way in Australia and in the States. Okay. Um, honestly, so excited for you and yeah. for all that's to come. So excited to read this book. It sounds glorious so mm. thank you for joining us all and and making this happen and with the time constraints and dates and all of that we're so so happy that we had you on yeah thank you so much for all your time and your effort and for having me it's an honor so I really appreciate it and yeah good luck with your querying um Melanie and thank yeah you. Angela you have your second book I mean Sinner's Isle is already a huge success <laughs> yeah. exciting yeah, yeah. Thank you. Well, it's going to cut us off any second, but yeah, thank you so much and enjoy your downtime on May 7th. <laughs> You've earned you. it. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.